Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I've got two replays in the Polish Tier 8 Tetri medium tank, the CS53. Now this line is one that obviously you've seen the last two, I've really enjoyed it past the Tier 5. It's just been such a fun grind to play, these tanks are fantastic. And this CS53 is just another one that is absolutely brilliant in this line. Now what's its key strength? Well its key strength is its DPM. The DPM on this tank is just nutty. It's absolutely beautiful. You can get it to like 6 second reload, fully pimped, for 300 alpha. Now that's really, that is tasty. And it's not the most mo mobile in the universe, so it is pretty mobile. I mean, you're seeing right now it's pretty decent, but it's not like a get up to 55, 56, 57, you know, up to towards 60 kilometers an hour type of medium tank like the Tier 10. It gets up to about 47, 48. You'd call it averagely mobile. It's sort of like the M48, because you wouldn't say the M48 pattern has, is amazing mobility. You'd say it's mediocre mobility, but has everything else about the tank to be great. This is exactly the same. It has mediocre mobility, but like the gun with the DPM and the pen is utterly fantastic. Because on this top gun, you've got 212 standard pen and 290 heat pen. 290 that is just nuts it means you can pen pretty much everything and that is absolutely great the one thing it doesn't have is like much like the line is true armor and by true armor i mean you are going to get hull down and bounce everything type of thing where it's got that strength in its armor somewhere it doesn't have that it has troll armor just like, like I said, like a lot of the line, where you're not going to be relying on it. You're not going to poke up on a ridge line and think, yes, I'm going to bounce something here. It's the type that you're thinking, please don't pen me. You might just ricochet off the top of your turret or just on your side or stuff when you're wiggling and stuff like that. It's exactly like that. So, in this game, I've just made a mistake, and that is poked out in front of two tier 10s that have made me go from full health to no health in less than two seconds. Fun. I shouldn't have driven out in front of those guys. I didn't quite expect the VK to swivel around as quickly as he did. And he hurt me in a lot of ways. And the machine also got one shot into me too. I was kind of lucky in a way that the machine didn't manage to kill me. Now I'm waiting to see if I can get a shot into this machine. But he's not quite giving them to me. And there we go. He pokes out and we can, with our 100mm gun, overmatch the side of that guy. Now, I've done this on vineyards. Which is a position that you've seen in my vineyards video. And we charge straight down the K line. And you can see, again, it's been very lucrative for me. I've managed nearly 4K combined. Well, 4K combined. Nearly 4K spotting. I've done 2K damage, which is nice. This position, this way to flank, is just very good. And if I hadn't taken those hits from that VK and the machine, I could have been so much more aggressive and possibly done a hell of a lot more. But you see there, I had to hesitate. I had to pull back when that machine looked like it could kill me. Because he'd have killed me. And that's just the unfortunate nature of the mistake I made. But this K-line push that I've made is actually really good for the right-hand spawn. But it's pretty unbalanced. Because this spawn that we're attacking, they just can't really do it. By the time they've got to K4-5, the enemy team has already pushed to K5. So, if you are on this left-hand spawn, don't do it. Go north. You're either going to camp in the hills... Or you're going to go north. And I can't ever recommend camping the hills. Because all it takes is someone to do what I did. And you're all spotted and you all get shot up. These spawns on vineyards just aren't great. It needs to be the ones that are further up north where they spawn at like D, E, 1. You know. Around that area. So, anyway. In this game you've seen a bit of the strength of the tank. You've seen the good reload. It's got 380 meters view range. Which is, you know... About average for tier 8 mediums. A lot of the tier 8 mediums have 380 meters view range. It's not bad, but it's not brilliant. You know, you can push it up to that f beyond 445 meters view range quite easily, and that's nice. So that game finished, and we ended up with one kill, 2.6k damage, like 4k spotting. It was a good push across their 1700 base, and we were bottom tier as well, which, you know, showed a bit of how it can deal with them. It's got the pen. I mean, 212 pen is great. You can deal with most tanks at tier 8 with that, and a lot at tier 9. And if you really need to pen tanks, you can just load the heat, which has got 290 pen, which is great. I mean, you can pen things like E100 turret fronts with that heat, you know. It's juicy. And that's really good. Now, we're in the second game, we're on Arctic region, and we are top tier. And 
I'm thinking, you know what, I'm going to make the normal play that I would try to make. And that is, we're going to push 2EF23 and we're going to try and get shots across people as they push up. Now, if you see me at the start of replays at the minute, change shells straight away. That's because of a bug. Now, you're saying bug 6.0? Never. That's, that's, no, that doesn't happen. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah well, okay, that does, it happens all the time. But... If you're on the Xbox Series X or S, it's a bug for you. Because if you're on the One S or the One X, it's not actually a thing. I don't know. I don't know why that is a, the case, but it just is. And if you don't have a reload timer at the start of games and it goes throughout the whole game, just switch shells. It's all you have to do, and you will get a reload timer at the start of your. Well, you'll get a reload timer for the rest of the game. It's just a bug where, for some reason, it's like automatically loading a shell that's not the first shell. It's weird. You'll see it on the UI where it's like when it's hovering over the shell like it is now where it's telling me it's AP. For some reason, it's just to the left of that like there's a fourth shell. But anyway, we're taking this aggressive position. Somehow this stockade's managed to make it round, even though we've got a gluttony of tanks that just could have absolutely wrecked this guy as he came round. We've managed to get a shot into his tracks there. He's fired two. I'm risking it for a biscuit. We shut him down. Now this CS53, my other Polish counterpart's coming in. I'm like, you know what? No, I'm not going to sit here and get into a DPM war with you. Because I've got one shot well, I've got one shot of damage less than you in health. So I don't want to risk getting into a DPM war with this guy. Because he will win. And right there, you're going to see the problem with the tank. In the fact that he's got no armor. We both just penned each other straight through the front of the turret. Dead easily. Now I've got a friend in this heavy. And I'm thinking, you know what? I could be more confident now. I'm, I'm kind of looking at these guys thinking, please come help me. You know, I, I, I need your help and we can get rid of this guy. Now, this guy's determined. He's just looking at me. So, he's gonna he doesn't even try to shoot with that. I thought he was going to try and pop a shot in. We just dodge artillery. I say dodge. It still took up a bit of a health. Get shot straight through the front of his turret. Unfortunately, low roll. So, we didn't actually kill him. And now our light tank's gone in. He is distracted. And he gets shut down. We've got behind this defender as well that just doesn't have a clue what's going off. Unfortunately for him. He gets shut down. We get hit by the artillery again. It damages our ammo rack. We're nearly dead. That could have been the end so easily. And I'm like, okay, I'm just going to go back around this corner in the hopes that this artillery doesn't decide to whack us again. Because I think it was an M44. And I'm just going to hide around this corner, wait till I get unspotted. There is a T150 over there, but I'm not too fussed about that. I want to get over here to these bushes in front so I can try and spot something. My, also, my other reason for going around that corner was I didn't really want to charge to the left because there could have been something up north that could have shot me. And I am con conscious of that. And as actually as I come around the corner, we spot the Guardian STG. We get a nice shot into him and I'm just thinking, please artillery, please don't just don't do it. So I'm just going to rush down low. Hope that it doesn't take a pot shot at me. It doesn't. So now I'm safe, unspotted. I'm going to push back up. And I'm going to push back up, and hopefully we can get some spots and shots into this Guardian STG. My thought is that this STG might be coming towards us, because obviously we did get a shot into him, and I'm thinking he might come after us, right? Because we're low health. We, he can secure a kill, and that's what people do sometimes. They don't think about the dangers that they're in. They just think about securing the kill, and that... That can lead to people dangerously going after you. But fortunately enough for me, he's actually charged up the northern end. So I don't have to worry about him. He's dead now. I'm just thinking, like, let's spot the base. We go sit in this bush and we spot the artillery. And I'm like, you know what? I'm spotting these guys without getting spotted. I'm just going to load HE so I can guaranteed kill this guy. We shut him down. Pull back behind the bush because there's nothing else really can shoot us. They're all down there. And now the artillery has gone. I can freely work where I am. I don't have to worry about getting pooped on anymore. Then we spot this SU-130 SU PM. Now, that guy's obviously dangerous. He's got a great gun. And if he decides to look at us, it could be bad news. He's pushed into a really bad position. We get a nice shot into the back end of him. He's lost so much health now to our team. I'm now unspotted, which means I can just finish him off. And unfortunately, the gun derps there and we don't get the kill. Which you did see a little bit, the gun derpiness there, which is why it's always nice to have the crew skills on this tank. Which is the same if you go back through the other two videos as what I run, which is like steady aim, rapid loading, sixth sense, born leader, the camouflage perks and camouflage expertise, muffled shot, run and gun, you know, all those sorts of perks. Now again, you could take get rid of the muffled shot and put 
steady, uh, not steady aim, sl snapshotting, just to make that gun better. Because it's just, they're, they're not the most accurate. So right here, I decide, you know what, I'm going to get a pen on this guy. I don't care if I die, because I've got low health, I'm never surviving sliding down there. I'm just going to get the pen on this guy and die, because we're not going to lose from this point. We actually get the final shot in, we slide down the hill, blow up. And there we go. But we ended that game with a really nice tally. We ended up with two kills, 4k damage, 1649 base XP, 1200 assistance. That's 5.2k combined. Ace tanker, confederate, high caliber sniper. And a very nice game for what is an absolutely unbelievably brilliant tank. This is one that a lot of people are going to enjoy. And it's just fantastic. So as always everybody, thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you next time. A great success!